ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys figure review. Now, today we're going to be having a look at a very, very awesome, imposing, large piece being the Hot Toys Iron Monger from the first Iron Man film. Now, I want to say a huge thank you to my mate Rodney for hooking me up with this figure. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been able to pick this guy up. Now, he doesn't come with the box, but what he does come with is all of his accessories and just the fact that he is so incredibly awesome. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get this guy off the rotating base and take a look at some of the details. This Iron Monger is absolutely packed with just little tiny intricate details and even in the paintwork it's absolutely stunning. That is what I meant when I said the details. I mean you can see all of these pistons, you can just see the level of paintwork. I mean it looks like textured metal and when I first sort of went to pick up this guy I thought bloody hell this thing is going to be incredibly heavy but no it is super light in fact you can pick it up with one hand. So I'm very impressed with the fact that they managed to make it look incredibly bulky and just heavy and it is all just a sort of plastic piece. Now I will turn him around as well just to give you an idea of some of the detail on the back. You can see all of these pistons, all these hydraulic sort of pieces and they all do move when you articulate him which is just absolutely awesome. You can see everything sort of working together and it just looks really awesome. Now he does have a pop out uh, rocket sort of section and it is incredibly difficult to get out. Now I do have the missile already stored in there. I'll see if I can get the missile out on its own. It might be a little bit tricky. Oh, it looks like the whole uh, missile pod sort of section is coming out, which is good because I want to show that to you guys anyway. So you can see that the missile pod does come out and I do have the missile stored in there, which looks really awesome and obviously was a key sort of part of the film where Tony rips out his targeting system. So definitely awesome to have that included. And then to pop it away, you simply just push everything back in. And I say simply, but it is incredibly tight to get this stuff uh, to get this stuff sort of back down in there but it can be done you just have to work with it and persevere so there we go we've locked everything back in just like so so it definitely can be done and you can just see the level of texturing now there is sort of a red brushing throughout as well so it makes it look like a little bit rusty or a little bit of a copper effect and I really do like that now of course being the Iron Monger, he does have the light up feature the batteries uh, were not installed in this guy and I don't have any batteries to hand but it still does look awesome when you have all the batteries put in there. Now, he does also have a compartment where you can find the uh, Jeff Bridges Obadiah stain in there. Now, to get this one out, it's a little bit complicated, but first things first, you want to pull these two chest pieces down and they will sort of click into place. Now, I did look at the instructions and it does say to do this, which is a little bit uh, interesting, but you basically want to section this part forward and just, there is a bit of a, a sort of um, tightness issue it, sort of catches on everything but you pull this arc reactor piece down you can see the cable there probably for the light up effect and then you simply lift the head panel back and there you have the Obadiah stain in there so it's just a bust of a figure but it's absolutely awesome I mean the details on that head sculpt just look really really fantastic I mean he's even wearing that little chain that he was wearing from the film and there's also of course dry brushing of the silver throughout on the inside as well and the whole sort of figure does move around inside the body to get a bit of a, a sort of articulation point for that bust. So it does look really awesome when you pose him up with that. And you can obviously see that, they see that there's some pistons in there as well, as well as the fact that he's wearing a harness in there. So they've definitely gone to town with the detailing on this guy. I mean, it looks really, really terrific. So I'll just close this back up. And to do that, you simply just make sure that the head of Obadiah is pushed forward and you want to put the arc reactor back up first. So it slides just behind these two panels like so and you want to make sure this silver piece is forward so it can rest up there and then you can simply close everything up and there you have it so all closed up with Obadiah inside I'm still not decided whether or not I want to have it displayed with Obadiah on the outside or the inside on it so we'll have to wait and see now I'm just going to zoom the camera down a little bit and I'll give you a look at the rest of the armor now I had to stop the camera sort of midway just because there are some sort of details to look at at this point. I mean, he also does have this uh, ex this expandable sort of minigun which has these bullet straps here which looks really awesome. And then on the other side, he has a missile pod which is very, very nicely painted with the tips of the missiles there and the pod itself looking really awesome. Now he does have light up effects on his hand as well. You can see he's got the sort of repulsor area and the switch for that is on the inside of the arm there. So you can pop the batteries in there and go at it just like that. Uh, now he also does have the pistons working around his leg area which does sort of help with the um, with the overall movie aesthetic and mine does have the cracks but only just a tiny little bit on the legs there. I'm not sure if you can even make those out to be honest with you. That one you definitely can. It's right there but it's not too terribly bad luckily. I have definitely seen worse. 
These feet are a work of engineering in and of themselves. I mean, it looks like they're sort of piston heads from a, a car sort of uh, engine, which is very interesting. But basically, you can extend the foot down and you can move this entire part forward to give him a little bit more height, which sort of works with the fact that you can add the thrusters onto the back. So if you swivel him around, these panels completely lift up and all of these individual panels are all articulated. You can see there's just a little bit of detail in there as well. And he does come with the rocket thrusters. Now, I don't know if this is the right one. We'll just have to see by plugging it in. And yeah, it appears to be. So basically that slots on and then you close this over and now he's got his entire rocket thruster. So obviously in the film they did sort of pop out. He didn't have them on all the time. And in my display, I don't have him with those just because they sort of make you unnecessarily have to make him extremely tall, which uh, I guess it's good to have him quite tall, but you don't want him to be too enormous, if you know what I mean. I mean, it looks better with him sort of just at this normal height. Now, the detailing obviously carries on throughout the legs as well. Really, really, really nice paintwork. Now, there are moving panels all throughout and pistons and all that, as you would come to expect with this guy. I mean, he is just an engineering marvel. I'm very impressed with uh, how they've actually gone and done this, especially for the time that this guy came out. So what we're going to do now is get the Diecast Mark III out here and do a bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. In an ideal world, I would have these two displayed together on one detox shelf. It will look absolutely stunning, but obviously I have my Hall of Armor set up and the Ironmonger just simply will not fit in a detox shelf. He is way, way too big, so he's going to have to go on top with the Hulkbuster and some of the other 1 4th scale stuff. But you can just see the size difference between these two figures. They are just completely in scale from the film. You can see that... The Iron Monger is just absolutely enormous. He towers over the Mark III. And you can see how impressive it was that the Mark III could obviously keep up with the size of the Iron Monger in the film. Now, being an older Hot Toys figure release, there are just some little kneeling issues. And in the case of the Iron Monger, it's a bit of an unfortunate one. Now, I'd say that about 80 to 95% of these Iron Monger figures, as far as I've seen on pictures online, in person, even the Iron Monger displayed at Secret Base that I saw when I went on my recent Hong Kong trip had this exact same issue, and that would be the cracks in the leg joints. So there's some here, and there's some here. Now, the one that I got isn't too terribly bad. Rodney has uh, his own version of the Ironmonger, so he had two, he sold me one. His version was a little bit worse, so I want to say a huge thank you for the fact that he sold me the one that was just a little bit better. Um, but the cracks are still pretty prominent, as you can see there. Now, they do not affect the articulation or... I don't want to say durability because I'm not sure how it's going to hold up over a long period of time and they are fixable. So I have spoken to Anto at Sci-Fi Toys and he did say that if you use some Tamiya uh, putty and you fill in those cracks, you might be able to paint over that with some gunmetal and just replicate the silver sort of dry brushing and you should be good to go. Now, I just want to basically highlight the fact that it shouldn't really just influence the fact that the joints uh, won't move because it's not really that part that moves. I mean, it does move for in and out, but when you're moving it forward and backwards, it's a whole completely different section. So it shouldn't really crack any further as far as I can tell, just based on the sort of uh, the pieces that do move, but you don't want to put too much stress on it. Just, so just sort of be careful when you are moving it around. You don't want to go too crazy. But as you can see, on the back, there isn't really any issues with the cracks. As you can see, there are no cracks or anything on the back. I have seen some where the cracks do extend around to the back as well. So just do be careful when you are picking up your very own Ironmonger. Make sure you pretty much just go through it, check over it with a fine tooth comb to make sure that the cracks aren't too terribly bad. Now, they are going to be there. Pretty much all these Ironmonger figures have it, as I said, but you can get one that's a little bit worse than others. So do make sure yours isn't too bad. Now, this Hot Toys Ironmonger, if you can still find him, would be a worthy addition to anyone's Iron Man collection. He's an absolutely stunning work of art from Hot Toys back in their prime when they were making these awesome big plastic Iron Man figures. Now, there are some issues here and there with the fact that there are those cracks in the, uh, in the leg areas, but it doesn't affect the joints, which is really the key aspect there. You can still articulate the legs without fear of this figure falling to pieces. So I'm very, very thankful of the fact that it doesn't really just ruin the whole figure. Now, that being the case, do be careful when you are picking them up off eBay. Just have a look at the photos. Make sure the joints, uh, the cracks in the legs aren't too terribly bad and then you should be good to go just having this guy on the shelf brings enough presence on his own 
you don't really have to have him in crazy dynamic poses. You can just have him posed holding a helmet like I have here, and he looks absolutely stunning. So I want to say a huge thank you once again to Rodney. I'll, uh, I'll ask him if he wants me to put his Facebook details down below. If you want to contact him, he might be able to source you some figures as well. So definitely, uh, definitely do check his details out if they are down below. Now, I've been working very hard on my Instagram page, guys. I've been taking more photos. I've taken photos of ACGHK, where I managed to see the unreleased prototype figures, all the upcoming stuff. Check my Instagram little story highlight section there for that. And also check my Facebook page. The links are all down in the description below. Let me do know if uh, let me know if you do want to see any other the reviews of anything because I most certainly can make that happen. I am working on a review of the original Ant-Man. A lot of people did let me know that they wanted to see that, so I am definitely working on that. So that's about it guys. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.